The next speaker is Aisha Canalos, followed by Melanie Gold. Hi, my name is Asha Canales. I'm from Minisync, New York. I'm a farmer. Can everyone hear me? Let me try this way. I'm from Minisync, New York. I'm a farmer. This, uh, this gas infrastructure that's here in our county is destroying my farm already. So you don't need to face them. Just keep a couple inches away from the microphone. Okay. okay? And focus on the microphone so your sound okay. is heard. Okay. So the recorder will get your remarks. Gotcha. That's important. Whatever they hear tonight doesn't matter. It's only what gets into the record. Okay. I do like to make eye contact, though, so people know I'm talking from the heart. Okay. <laughs> I'm here today as a resident of Minisync, the neighboring town. I've been battling the Minisync compressor station along with the other residents of Minisync for nearly three years now. <laughs> okay. All right. This is very, you know, upsetting for all of us who have been fighting for so long. Can you hear me all right? Everything is good? Copacetic? All right, here we go. Okay. I'm here today as a resident of Minisync, who has been battling the Minisync compressor station for nearly three years now. I'm also here as a representative of the organizations Minisync Matters, We the People Matter, Food Not Fracking, and One Billion Rising for Justice. But perhaps most importantly, I'm here as a farmer in the Black Dirt region. I trust that many others will speak to the ill effects and have already of a gas-fired power plant on communities, health of children and families, and incredible risk to the local economy. I'm limiting, I'm limiting my testimony to address the fact that fracked gas power plants and all fracked gas infrastructure, for that matter, are not compatible with agriculture. It's one or the other. There is simply not room for both. Back in 2011, when fellow Minisync organic farmer Deborah Lane and I began researching the effects of compressor stations, pipelines, gas-fired power plants, and other gas infrastructure facilities on agriculture, we found next to nothing. What we did find was isolated to one or two aspects with no cohesive report on effects that a farmer could utilize to better educate and protect themselves from potential threats. I manage a small organic blueberry and, and vegetable farm. Uh, Deborah and her family run an organic grass-fed beef farm. It's been in her family since the 1700s. It's one of the oldest in the States. We both live and work in close proximity to the Minisync compressor station. The Minisync compressor was approved by a slim margin and built last year although we had begun several new plots and dedicated months to raising our seedlings. My husband and I made the difficult decision to let go of our crops. Working outside, less than a quarter of a mile from the compressor, I was getting sick when venting occurred from the facility, dizziness, nausea, headaches, and then rashes. At one point, I stood up from a sitting position while working and aiming to walk through a doorway, I walked into a wall. Dozens of Minisync residents reported the same symptoms in addition to sore throats and respiratory irritations and infections that have lasted almost this whole last year. There's, there's a family that lives across the street from the compressor. They have to shut all their, all their windows completely, even in the summer. They have no AC because their children are chronically ill. Um, and just so everyone knows, this, this CP Valley is, is supposed to release 10 times the amount of the very same chemicals. We're already getting sick. My farm is going to be, I won't have a farm if this infrastructure continues. And honestly, looking around the room, it breaks my heart to see all you union guys, you're beautiful young guys, and a lot of you look just like friends of mine and people I went to high school with. And I have nothing against you at all. But you're being lied to and manipulated. In Minisync, they told us that they would have all these great union jobs. All these team guys were here. Hi, Todd. How you doing? He sent in letters on behalf of Minisync Compressor Station Millennium, uh, getting all those union jobs. When the first day of, of 
con you know, construction started in Minisync, all the trucks that rolled in were from Texas, Kansas, Arkansas, and Florida. We didn't see one from New York. You're being lied to and manipulated, and I don't know why they're wasting your time like that, except that they, they, they can't stand on their own and do it. They can't do their own dirty work. They're getting you to do it. I realized this last spring that I cannot work my farm, we'll never be able to farm unless we succeed with our case to shut down the mini sink compressor. Far worse was the realization that our case sets a national precedent with all the attending legal precedent that will either empower other farmers and communities like me and mini sink or will conversely do the opposite and ensure that farmers all over the country almost immediately feel the pain and anger that I've been feeling. The CPV Valley power plant, if approved, would emit approximately 10 times the amount of the very same contaminants that the mini sink compressor is releasing now, directly into the black dirt region, our most valued, beautiful agricultural land. 60% of our economy in Orange County comes from farms, and they're all in the black dirt region. Wayanda, Goshen, um, you know, Warwick, uh, mini sink. And, and it's all right here. That's our economy. That's our permanent jobs. It's not, it's, you cannot have both. I'm sorry to say that. But the jobs that we need for the people here are, are not, they're not going to be permanent jobs. The permanent jobs would come from sustainable uh, industries like wind and, and water turbines and things like that. This is, this is nothing. This is nothing compared to the loss of property values that we're going to suffer and the health effects that we're already suffering. If people are sick now, if people are getting sick and farms struggling and permanent jobs are in serious risk and home and farm values are already plummeting all as a direct result of this infrastructure that's already here, how could it possibly be justifiable to introduce more of the same infrastructure into the region or any at all? The local people who oppose these projects may be viewed as radical, but how is it radical to fight for our homes, our families' health and well-being, our livelihoods and our farms? It seems far more radical to impose on communities the poisoning of their air, water, food and soil for corporate profit. In fact, those impositions sound a lot like human and civil rights violations. The Public Service Commission must recognize the devastating consequences of this dangerous plan, which will only do great harm to the middle class families at a time when they most need help and reject this plan on those promises. Thanks. Bravo.